Hi there, my name is Lucy Taylor and I run the Community Land Advisory Service Programme in Wales for social farms and gardens. I'm sorry I can't be with you today, but I thought I would uh, just give you a flavour in a few slides of the work that we are doing in Wales at the moment. Um, so the, the Community Land Advisory Service Programme that I run is one of several programmes that we run across Wales. Um, it's uh big lottery funded it was it was big lottery funded i should say in 2013 and then in 2018 Welsh government um said that they would fund us and that funding is now guaranteed to 2025 um and potentially beyond that the program is all about helping groups access land for their community-led green space projects so <clears throat> that is very much around groups gaining access to land through leases, licenses and planning advice, whether they need planning permission for certain structures, for instance, and helping them apply for planning permissions. Just moving on, these are, as I mentioned, we're running several programmes in Wales. These are the programmes we're currently running. Um, Community Land Advisory Service at their top. We run a network uh, called Edible Cardiff, um, <clears throat> which is, is all about peer-to-peer -peer networking of, of community growing spaces um, and and all the support things that support community growing spaces like um, food pantries. And that's really a, quite a flourishing network at the moment with lots of events. We the main one of the main programmes we're running at the moment that is taking up a lot of um, our team's time is the Resilient Green Spaces programme. Um, which is shown here in this infographic. Um, we are setting up some, um, some food hubs across Wales um, to sort of help local supp food supply chains. But I suppose one of the things you may be interested in hearing about is is the um, building the uh, allotment development forum, which will which is is to create and regenerate allotments. It's potentially 10 to 20 sites across Wales with sort of 5 to 10k um, being provided by June 2023 and we are looking for expressions of interest on that at the moment if you have a look at our website and click on resilient green spaces or, or click on Wales first and then resilient green spaces and allotment development forum um, you will see there's some expression of interest forms there for landowners and communities who are looking for support. We're also running um, a really good um, forum for allotment years, allotment years, I would say that as a word, um, just so that um, there's the sort of peer to peer um, support as well as um, landowner and community relations um, so that sort of productive conversations can happen around creating more allotments across Wales. So yeah, a lot of my work is is on a day-to-day -day basis around creating spaces like this one. And um, this is um Pentrush uh community garden in um in Blyna Gwent, Cum Tulare. And um yeah, it's it's about helping groups either sort of speaking to local authority to gain access to a bit of green space that uh, like this one that's um, behind some, um, a changing room buildings at playing fields there. So they've actually got a cafe in part of the changing rooms and they wanted to create a, uh, a community growing space. So we're sort of helping them with the sort of community asset transfer process and um, and sort of any planning advice that they might need. The bottom right hand sort of plan is is a um, a community growing sort of mixed use space in Cardiff, in Splot in Cardiff, by a company called Green Squirrel, an organisation called Green Squirrel. They're doing some pretty amazing things there. We had a long battle in trying to gain the land from the council. A lot of work went into that um, with uh, the community land advisory service providing a lot of support and then around gaining the planning permission for the structures as well. One of the things that we do do uh, 
under the class company service is to award 15 projects each year for being able to access land and um, get onto the land to start their, their green space projects and we get groups to complete a site resilience plan we were trying to encourage lots of groups starting out or even further down the line to articulate how they're sort of showing funders and decision makers how they align with the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act um, and it, it just helps sort of local authorities and funders to see how they're, they're, these groups are actually helping them achieve lots of the wellbeing goals and doing some really great work in communities for them as well as for the actual communities that they live in. So there's things like they have to say what sort of biodiversity they're encouraging on the site and um, things like improving the soil, rainwater harvesting, how they're improving physical and mental well-being, well-being of the community um, and we look at things like how, how sustainable the site is overall and um, whether they're working with local businesses and encouraging um, local schools and um, young people to come onto the site and learn things as well. As you can see, it's set out in two columns where they talk about what they're doing now and what they're going to do in the future. And by filling out this form, they, they, they then have some ideas as well as to how they might improve things on the site. So it's a really good way of sort of bring, articulating some of the great work that you are doing and what you're planning to do. Just thought I would let you know about the the, the um, Community Land Advisory Series Wales resources page. It's, it's, it's up to date, it's, it's a good resources page, um, specifically around negotiating with landowners. Um, you, there's a heads of terms template there that you can use to sort of lay out the things that you really need from the site before you start getting into detailed sort of perhaps discussions with solicitors and things so that it's it's really important that early on you're talking about the things with the landowner that you definitely need so that heads of terms document on negotiating with landowners is 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 really useful and we've got um some really good planning advice notes now as well around um, what needs planning permission, how to gain planning permission, and we've just done one as well on what might constitute a sort of change of use that might need planning permission if you wanted to do um, different range of activities, not just food growing. Um, lots of support out there for community managed spaces at the moment. Um, the picture on the right is the one the kind of TAF. A corporate plan that sort of goes up to um, 2024 and there's there's chapters in there around sort of how communities or how the council is looking to improve places and, and regenerate certain areas and also environmentally what they're wanting to do in terms of I suppose increasing biodiversity and help groups um, help communities access green spaces so yeah there's lots of support supporting documents nationwide throughout wales and also locally with your local authority um so yeah lots of hooks and support and if you come to us for sort of one-to-one -one advice we can help you with with sort of articulating that perhaps through a business plan um or just some sort of way of, of and persuading the local authority or the landowner to let you have access to the land. Some of the lessons learned from me, I suppose, I know over the years that it is difficult for landowners to trust communities to access their land. They want to know that the group's being robust. And one of the things that the first things that I do is make sure that, that group is representative in some way of their local community and that they've consulted with the lo local community on the doorstep of that particular site. Um, we also look at um, how groups will be able to sort of sign a lease, whether that or license, um, whether that sort of, whether you're sort of incorporated or, or, or just, just a constituted group. We help them, groups go through that process of whether um, it's a good idea, what type of agreement's best for them. And 
one of the things that we are trying to get councillors to do is be proportionate, especially in more deprived areas of uh, communities where perhaps there's a huge amount of benefit that could come from the project, but perhaps less skills to be able to articulate what they're, they're wanting to do on the site. And I think it's important for local authorities and other landowners to be proportionate um, about the hoops that need to be jumped through. But we are there to help those groups do that. Um, we do as act as a conduit between communities and, and landowners, and we sort of help help communities find allies um, within within sort of decision making bodies like local authorities and, and get people working as a team um, and, and get sort of building up an evidence base of how representative you are. And um, I think it is really important for small community groups, the third sector, sort of environmental third sector bodies like mine and um, the one I work with and also local authorities, that we all work together and collaborate to get the best that on the scheme for, for that particular site, for that particular community. Um, just coming to the end now, this is somebody in the um, Swansea Bay Health Board, um, who Amanda Davis is her name. She she offered up some farmland next to the Morrison Hospital, and it was a sort of pioneering thing for that that particular health board to do. And these are the, some of the tips that she came up with in terms of sort of overcoming any barriers to accessing particular land that a, perhaps a large owner landowner has. You know things like finding somebody in the organisation who can champion your cause and use policies to to drive change. And um, yeah, realise things do take time. I was very impressed by how quickly this this project actually came off. But um, there are um, you know lots of hoops that need to be jumped through and legal process to be, process to go through. So it does take time, months, and. Um, just to be patient and try and be, um, you know, polite and um, wanting to work as a team all the time and just be patient. Uh, these are my details. Um, we do offer one-to-one -one support as well as the resources I showed you. And we can also sort of suggest groups to go and visit perhaps and things like that. So if you want some more information, um, and one to one support, please do drop me a line and um, we can see how we can help you um, get on a particular site that you're looking to to um, build a community project on. So uh, once again, sorry I can't be there, but I hope this gives you a little bit of flavour of what we're about and the help we can offer. Have a lovely day. Cheers. Bye bye.